previously on Parish Schoolie. Okay, so lift pump has been changed. Wires need to be, you know, uh, zip tied back together, but this lift pump, I had a check engine light for. Since I've gotten the bus, it's, it's came up a couple of times. This is the first time that continuously came on. The turbo has also been sounding like it sucks air. It's been giving me a real whiny sound. A real sucking for air type sound over the last week of the check engine light being on. So now that I've changed that fuel pump, check engine lights off, uh, runs a whole lot better, but we're still having that, that sucking sound, that issue with the air. So I'm having air problems and fuel problems this week. All right, so today I am adding a boost gauge to my 5.9 Cummins. All of the issues I've had with this bus so far mechanically have been air and fuel. So the boost, the, uh, the connections not being good, or the intake leaking, it's, a, it's been a boost problem and a fuel problem. I've had to change the injectors. I changed the lift pump last week. Lift pumps down here wasn't giving enough PSI to the injection pump, which this is expensive. So if this doesn't get enough PSI, it'll still run without the without the proper PSI. But after after a while, it will it will mess up that thousand dollar piece. So I've ordered two gauges. Ordered a boost gauge and. A fuel pressure gauge. The fuel pressure gauge has not come in yet. Boost gauge seems super simple. We have the connections. You have to get this piece. You have to. This replaces an intake bolt. So this bolt right here on the intake is what I've taken out. This one goes in its place. And you can see this one's hollow. And then this screws into it with the hose. See what I mean? So we're going to put that on, see how it goes. So today I'm installing a fuel pressure gauge. This is the fuel, fuel filter. It's the inline. This one's the fuel line going in, this one's the fuel line going out, and that goes to the injection pump. This is a um, 5.9 Cummins. It is a 2000. The 98.5 through 07 has the VP44 injection pump. If you are not familiar with the VP44, you should get familiar with it because it can cost you a lot of money if you don't monitor it. Um, I changed my lift pump and the lift pump failing to give this pump 15 PSI. Between between 11 and 15 PSI is what I'm reading that it needs, factory wise anyway. So my fuel pressure gauge, I had to order this separately. It's got new, new copper washings. This replaces this bolt. So I'll pull this out, I'll put this in, and then this is hollow. That way my sensor and my plug goes into there. So I'll show you how that goes. So this is the fuel pressure gauge. It comes with a power cable and it comes with the cable with the sensor. So this runs to the back of that. I'll show you where this goes. We replaced this banjo bolt. They're called banjo bolts. Replaced the stock one with this one. And then this comes with the gauge, and this is the sensor that screws into this bolt. It seems uh, pretty simple, just like the boost gauge. Just replaces a bolt, and good to go. But this sensor just kind of plugs in. Like that. I'm going to run that through there where the heater used to be, the heater cord. And then this plugs into the, the gauge. 
put some power on the gauge, put a ground on the gauge, and then uh, should have should have some fuel pressure. But uh, don't forget to prime. You gotta prime it to since I had to I had to empty this out um, in order to loosen up that bolt. So don't forget to drain your system. Don't forget to prime it. It has been probably 10 months since installing these gauges. These gauges are so vital to your engine, to the smooth operation, to diagnosing what's wrong with your engine. Um, there are so many useful things I've learned about these gauges since installing them. Just a few things while I'm right here by the engine. This is the boost. This one's boost gauge goes all up here and then through the firewall so I replaced the very small tubing or hose that comes with the kit because I did not know that boost doesn't engage until it's under a load till the engines under a load and what that means is you will not get any boost registering till you're driving the bus i thought that there wasn't any air coming through the hose so i upgraded the hose to a bigger line i now know what my psi should be psi varies on altitude on terrain on how much throttle you're giving the engine so you can tell a lot of things by your boost gauge. Um, so it's it's pretty important to have a boost gauge. If one of your turbo boots come undone, or a gasket pops, or your turbo stops working, you're gonna notice it in the engine's performance. If you have the boost gauge and you can see what you're actually running, and that'll tell you right off the bat, I have a boost problem. So I do enjoy the boost gauge. Just keep in mind, install it the way it's supposed to come. It just won't register by revving it up. Um, this is my first diesel, my first turbo, so I did not know that. This is a learning experience for me as well. So, fuel pressure gauge taught me so much. Um, after installing the fuel pressure gauge, seeing what I was running, there are two pressures you need to pay attention to. Pressure at idle and your pressure at wide open throttle. So, with the factory lift pump i was doing at idle i was running i was running about 10 to 11 psi and then wide open throttle between five and three at the lowest psi the professionals at the injector shop said that this vp44 system it needs to see a constant 10. idle wide open throttle everything in between it has to see at least 10 psi to give this vp44 adequate pressure now more pressure will not give you better performance adequate pressure will give you the performance it's designed for so i have not seen a peak in performance i have seen what this engine should be doing since installing i've driven about 3500 miles 4000 miles since installing the fuel pressure gauge with the factory lift pump. And this whole 4,000 miles, we did not see adequate pressure. Because of what I learned from the fuel pressure gauge, I upgraded the fuel system. So now we're working with an air dog system. So it upgraded this factory line, this factory line size. It was this size, right? Now it's half inch pipe going to here. The fuel pressure gauge is now on the air dog system. We had to chop it and extend it probably six feet to reach back here. Just keep an eye on the wires. It's pretty much just chopping and extending. These are the original wires. So I tried to use some of the school bus wiring that came out as close to the colors as I could. You take the Allen screw out and this screws right in to place so this will now tell me what the air dog system is pushing i will show you a startup now this air dog system since in upgrading the fuel system i see a constant 15 whether i'm wide open throttle or idling 
it's somewhere between 14 and 16, which is amazing. Um, that's what the engine is supposed to have. We'll see how long this system lasts, how good it is, how good customer service is, if it does go bad on me. This new mount it's sitting on, I fabricated out of aluminum, aluminum angle iron and some screws. For now, this is what we're working with. It's not going anywhere. Um, I'm gonna start the bus up for you real quick so you can see the fuel pressure and just see, you know, kind of how everything works. Another good diagnosing feature for the fuel pressure gauge is the needle bumps. When you have that yellow light that pops up that you can't start, it's the glow plugs or it's, it's injectors, whatever it is, priming. When that light comes on for the first time, it'll bump the fuel pressure. So you'll see the needle bump and go back down. The factory lift pump, it would bump me to about 5 PSI, but the air dog will bump me to about 10 PSI. So I'll show you that right now, and that's just a really good um, diagnosing tip if you're scared that your lift pump is not working. The boost gauge won't show unless there's a load on it. Fuel pressure, as soon as it warms up, it's going to be moving back up. When we're fully warm at idle, it'll usually hit about 16, 16 and a half PSI. So that's a wrap on the fuel pressure and the boost gauge. If you haven't caught on yet, they are very vital to your engine. In the 4,000 miles I've driven with these two gauges, I've learned a tremendous amount about my engine, about the performance, terrain, how it would act in the mountains, how it acts on flat land. They tell you so much, and if your bus does not come with these gauges, I would strongly suggest installing them. I spent a total of about $140 on the gauges and the fittings that you need to get them to work. Since I use the air dog system, the banjo boat slash Schrader valve, it was $25, $30. And uh, it's totally, I don't need it anymore.